Ahab the Arab, and that funny, funny verse in that song comes to my mind every time I read that. Ahab the Arab by Ray Stevens. The guy did the streak, and he did, yeah, yeah, just funny, funny. He is a real, real pro-American. I don't know if he's a Christian, but he is, yeah, he is really gone. He does uh, patriotic uh -huh. comedy parodies now and all kinds of stuff, yes. Oh, was he? Oh. Saturday night. Ah, I didn't see him. Yeah, I just laughed. He got to see when I thought, oh. it's Obama's money. Oh, yeah, Obama's money. There you go. Oh, too funny. My good. Well, anyway, he's, he's, I don't know if he's a Christian, but he, he probably is, would be my guess, but uh, he's certainly a patriot, so. Absolutely. There you, okay, so uh, where are we? We're in uh, 50. Please, thank you. Laban and Bethel answered and said, The things come from the Lord. We cannot speak to you bad or good. Behold, Rebekah is before you. Take her and go, and let her be the wife of your master's son. Now that seems a little brutal in our culture, but you know they're they're just saying you know this is they're they're acknowledging it's from the Lord, and they're also saying you know not only that but uh, it, they well, yeah it's family which you know they're trusting that he's telling the truth there, but he's got all of the camels and all of the booty to prove this, and. They know that they're going to get that stuff. There's no doubt about it. He wouldn't have come up here with this large retinue of stuff in order to turn around and take it all back. So they know that. But it does seem a little brutal. But, you know, there was a bride price back then and, and people got married. Uh, has anybody seen the movie Fiddler on the Roof? Yes. Great, great movie. One of my favorite songs, I posted it a couple times on fa Facebook, is Do You Love Me? Do you remember that song from there? It's, uh, I can't remember their names. What were their names? The girl, the husband, and the wife. And she says, you know, whatever. Do you love me? And she said, what? And he says, do you love me? And they've been married for 26 years. And they have children. And she says, stop speaking like a foolish man. And they start going into this kind of talking, kind of singing. And eventually it ends up at the end where they, I guess I, I do love you after all. If this is what love is, then I do love you. But, you know, people didn't marry for love back then. And things tended to work better. You go to Japan, people don't always marry for love and they last their marriages last their lifetime. Japanese men are a little bit different and they usually have three or four mistresses throughout their life. But the marriage tends to last over there because it's an institution more than a, a feeling. Whereas here we put everything into feelings and when the feelings fade away, which they inevitably will, things fall apart. So, what's that? We want somebody else to read. Oh, okay. Um, anybody, please, uh, where are we? We're in uh, uh, 52, please. When Abraham's servant heard their words, he bowed to the ground before the Lord. Then he brought out objects of silver and gold and garments and gave them to Rebekah. He also gave precious gifts to her brother and her mother. So they're getting it. They're, they, they knew they would. He was excited about it. Now he's getting this stuff. Right? Okay, please. Then he and the men with him ate and drank and spent the night. When they got up in the morning, he said, Send me to my master. But her brother and mother said, Let the girl stay with us for about ten days. Then she can go. Okay, so they, they actually are going to miss her. You know, it's not that just that they sold this girl and they're getting their booty. They actually are going to miss her. They'd like to spend some time with her. Probably mom above everybody else, you know. This is sudden. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, somebody meets somebody and they elope and they're gone forever. I mean, this is really sudden. And she knows I will probably never see this girl again. So that's just the way it was back then. And uh, they're going quite a distance south. So uh, uh, it, it's kind of touching that little part there. Anyway, please go ahead. But he responded to them, Do not delay me, since the Lord has made my journey a success. Send me away, so that I may go to my master. So they said, Let's call the girl and ask her opinion. They called Rebecca and said to her, Will you go with this man? She replied, I will go. You know, that, was, that, that, that seems unusual that they would ask her opinion on anything. Yeah. It, to, to me, it just does. Taking the whole culture in context, it, it, it seems unusual, but they did ask her. And what I 
I bet, and I don't know this for certain, but I bet that they were hoping that she would be just like mom and say, I, I want to stick with mom for a while, okay? But she says, no, I'll go. So she's an adventurous person. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So, you know, here she goes, and she probably, may, you know, maybe they made her uh, carry the, she had to go get the water all the time. Maybe she's thinking, I don't have to go get the water anymore. I mean, who knows? But, you know, yeah, great deal. I'm getting out of this. The what? She was probably about 13 or 14 is my guess. She's probably a real young girl. That's my guess. Anyway, there you go. Okay, please. So they sent away their sister Rebecca and her nurse and Abraham's servant and his men. Okay, so they sent a nurse along with her, which is traditional. You're going to see this again and again as we go on. But yes, the, uh, the nurses were probably designated from birth, is my guess. Maybe not from birth, but probably. And they just took care of this person their whole life. That was their thing. So anyway, go ahead. They blessed Rebecca, saying to her, Our sister, may you become thousands upon ten thousands. May your offspring possess the gates of their enemies. Okay, now, uh, is that the, uh, did you finish that verse? Yes, you did. Okay, uh, the gates of your enemies. Where else is that blessing pronounced? Anybody? Okay, well, we're going to go to the book of Ruth, and I'm hoping I'm right on this, but I do believe it is. So we're going to go to Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Oh, Old Testament. <laughs> I'm kidding. You want to go to Ruth, and we want to find... Um, uh, hang on one second here. Got them. And it says, I, I'm sure I'm right, and I, I hope I am, because if not, I'm wasting your time and making myself look like a dummy. But it says here, um, okay, here's the blessing. It says in verse 12 um, what chapter? Uh, of chapter 4, it says, May your house be like the house of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah, because of the offspring which the Lord will give you from this young woman. Okay, so... They, uh, they did that, and then you go down a little farther, and it says, And may he be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age, for your daughter-in-law who loves you is better to you than seven sons who has borne him. So, you know, pronouncing blessings upon people. Oh, let's go all the way up to uh, verse 11. Did I read that? I didn't. It says, And all the people who were at the gate and the elders said, We are witnesses. The Lord make this woman who is coming to your house like Rachel and Leah. The two who built up the house of Israel. That's what I was thinking of is verse 11. So they're pronouncing a blessing on the offspring of the, uh, the wife-to-be who's moving into the covenant community. And that's the same thing with her. As they're saying, you know, um, O oh sister, may you become the mother of thousands of ten thousands, and may your descendants possess the gates of those who hate them. So... You know, that's just, and I'm sure there are other occurrences in the Old Testament where they do this that I am forgetting, but that's one that just happened to come to my mind is uh, the book of Ruth. Anyway, didn't mean to divert, but please, go ahead, verse 61. Then Rebecca and a young woman got up, mounted the camels, and followed the man. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac was returning from... Pierre Lahai Roy. For he was living in the the Negev, Negev, which means south. The Negev is the south desert, and it also means south. Okay, now where is Be'er Lahai Roy mentioned before? Be'er is well, and Lahai Roy is... That's right, Hagar, when she ran away, and this is the well of the one who sees, Be'er Lahai Roy. So this is in the south towards Egypt somewhere, because she was certainly traveling back to Egypt, and... Uh, Anyway, so that's, that's where that well comes from before. Good memory there, mister. Okay, what's that? I'm impressed. Oh, I am too. I, he's the last person I would have expected that from. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He's got a, he's got a great memory. He's, Ken remembers things from high school that I don't even remember. When he said, he's, he, I'm, I'm going to get it wrong. I sat in front of him and behind. I sat behind him. I always get it wrong. I sat behind him in astronomy class, right? I don't even remember having astronomy class. I didn't remember having that class until he mentioned it. And I had to think, did I have astronomy? And I guess I slept through it, but yeah, I did. So he remembers everything, this guy. The lights were out and it was dark. Yeah, yeah. Who knows what we were doing back then, too. So, goodness gracious. But, uh, oh boy, I tell you. Anyway, yeah, absolutely. So, we. Uh, uh, Oh, Bier Lahiroy. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, so I don't remember where we are now. Okay, go ahead, please. So the servant took Rebecca and left. Now Isaac was. We, and we did that. Okay. In the early evening, Isaac went out to walk in the field, and looking up, he saw camels 
coming. Okay, does anybody have a word other than walk in the field in their version? Meditate. All right, this is one of those difficult to translate Hebrew words. Okay, so some will say meditate, some will say this and that. And, you know, it's just a word that, that people are not 100% sure about. And you're going to find more of them as we progress through the Bible. But it's just kind of interesting that, you know, there you go. Um, all right, and, you know, sometimes we meditate when we walk, right? So, I mean, it, it, the, they have to give their best thought on what is he doing when they don't know the exact meaning of the word. And so, it, you know, they think, well, this word... It's not a word for walk, it's not a, you know, in other words, and they think, well, what is he doing? So they came up with that, meditate. All right, so please, go ahead. Rebecca looked up, and when she saw Isaac, she got down from her camel and asked the servant, who is that man in the field coming to meet us? The servant answered, it is my master. So she took her veil and covered herself. Okay, so she's being the, uh, what do you call it, when, uh, you know, she doesn't want her husband to see her face until after they're married and all that whatever. So uh, a traditional thing or a cultural thing, I think. Anyway, so she covered herself. It, 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 she took a veil and covered herself. It doesn't mean her whole body. It means she, I think she covered her face. So, you know, to, whatever that symbolizes in that culture, I can't be really 100% sure, but you do see them doing that, covering their faces up. And, okay, so go ahead, please. Then the servant told Isaac everything he had done. And Isaac brought her into the tent of his mother, Sarah, and took Rebekah to be his wife. Isaac loved her, and he was comfort after his mother's death. Okay, so he's got his wife, and uh, now he can forget about mom and move on in his life with her. So, you know, I mean, that's kind of the what you get there. Not really forget about her, but, I mean, he's he's been mourning over the loss of his mother, and uh, maybe that's why Abraham chose this time to go up there. Whatever reason, you know, he says it's time for him to have a son. And like I said, he's 37. Is that what we, we said? I mean, he's not a spring chicken, but it's time for him to get a wife. And that maybe because mom is dead and he just needs some comforting and this is a good way to do it. So there you go. His Chapter. mother's 10 and she's gone now. Right. So in other words, she is now the matriarch of the family. She is now, yeah, she has moved into that position. Okay. Ver and I skipped right over that. I'm glad you asked that, or we would have just, what's that? Nope, not at all. But like I say, they know she's going to be a wife forever. There's not the divorce and all that that's going on here. And so, uh, and it had nothing to do with love. It says he loved her, but he didn't love her before he met her. You know what I mean? It was just, this is an arranged marriage, and as it said in the, the Fiddler on the Roof, I guess I love you. We've been together all these years, and, you know, we've had children, and, you know, I've cooked your clothes and washed your, cooked your food and washed your clothes and all the things she says in there, and, and so, <laughs> but that, that is love, as is indicated in the Bible, is that people are obligated and performing their duty. It, it's not the emotional feeling that we want before we get married. And, you know, as a matter of fact, that's a hindrance, I believe, to a proper relationship. I just believe it. it. It doesn't mean it's wrong, but I believe that those feelings, if that's what you are basing your marriage on, are going to end in failure. If that's all you're basing your marriage on. Because, man, those feelings, i got to tell you, after three months, unless I'm mistaken, we all kind of start... Strong yeah, I mean, they just don't last forever. Well, you, they well, they feel them for others. That's right. Yeah. So you can... It, it, that's right. You can feel those feelings for others. You're married to her, and there's somebody else that you get this strong feeling for. All of a sudden, you, you end up over there. Yeah, you know, so that's absolutely right. So uh, the feelings are much less important than the, the obligation and the uh, commitment that the Bible speaks of. Okay, so please, go ahead. Anybody, 25. Yep. Okay, anybody, start reading chapter 25. <laughs> okay, I'll do it. Abraham again took a wife, and her name was Keturah. All right, so Abraham is, you know, he's lost his wife, and there's nothing wrong with this. He's, you know what, I mean, but uh, she's not part of the covenant people. She's not part of the promise, and when Abraham is gone, we're not going to hear about these people again. But Abraham took a uh, wife, and her name was Keturah, and she bore him Zimram, Yaksan, Midan, Midian, Ishbak, and Shua. Okay, now, Midan and Midian are two groups of people. And I, I bring that up specifically because later we're going to see their names mentioned. Some translations will call both of them Midianites and some of them don't. And uh, specifically the King James Version is what I'm thinking of. And that's at the time of Joseph, 
We'll go there real quickly, just so when we get there, we can remember that we went there. Um, we want to go down to the time when Joseph is sold for, um, uh, by his brothers. If anybody knows exactly where this is, it's probably about 38. Um, let's see here. Uh, where, oh, no, it's 37. 